How Each Little Rascal's Cast Member Died. The Our Gang series, better known as The Little Rascals, holds a cherished place in the hearts of countless fans worldwide. For decades, these endearing child stars brought laughter, mischief, and timeless charm. Yet, behind the joyous and carefree scenes, shorts lie a tragic truth. Just a few years after our gang ended, scores of its actors were pass away. Today, we will delve into their painful endings. Carl Dean Switzer, born on August 7, 1927, was a multifaceted American talent who left an indelible mark on both the entertainment industry and the world of dog breeding. He is best remembered for his iconic portrayal of Alfalfa in the beloved Short Subjects series Our Gang. Switzer's journey in the world of entertainment began in the mid-1930s, when he was just a child. He secured a pivotal role in the Our Gang series, where he portrayed the lovable and endearing character of Alfalfa. His portrayal of Alfalfa quickly became one of the most cherished and enduring aspects of the series, earning him a special place in the hearts of fans worldwide. However, the path to success was not without its challenges. After leaving the Orr Gang series in 1940, Sweetser faced the daunting prospect of typecasting, struggling to secure substantial roles as he transitioned into adulthood. Despite these challenges, he continued to pursue his passion for acting, albeit often in minor roles and B-movies. As time passed, Sweetser's life took a different turn. He ventured into dog breeding, a field where he found a new calling. His love for animals, particularly dogs, led him to become a respected breeder known for his dedication to producing high-quality hunting dogs. Additionally, he became an accomplished hunting guide, sharing his expertise and passion for the outdoors with fellow enthusiasts. In 1954, Switzer took a significant step in his personal life by marrying. He and his wife welcomed a son into the world, marking a new chapter in his life. However, their union faced challenges, and the couple ultimately divorced in 1957. Tragically, Carl Dean Switzer's life was cut short in January 1959, when he met a tragic end. During this tumultuous period, he agreed to train a hunting dog, a treeing walker coonhound, for his friend and occasional business partner, Moses Samuel Bud Stilts. Switzer and Stilts had crossed paths while working together with Roy Rogers on various productions at the Corriganville Movie Ranch. However, an unfortunate incident occurred while the hunting dog was in Switzer's care. The dog ran off in pursuit of a bear, leaving Stilts unsympathetic to Switzer's predicament. Stilts insisted that Switzer either return the dog or compensate him for its value. Switzer, struggling to produce the necessary funds, resorted to placing advertisements in newspapers and distributing flyers, offering a reward for the dog's safe return. After much effort, the dog was eventually found and brought to a bar where Switzer was working at the time. The person who located the dog received a reward of $35 in cash and $15 worth of alcoholic beverages, which roughly equated to $450 in 2020. Switzer was disheartened by the loss of this money. In the wake of these events, Switzer engaged in an emotional conversation with his friend Jack Piott a 37-year-old unit still photographer. Together, they decided that Stilts should reimburse Switzer for the finder's fee, arguing that the dog ultimately belonged to Stilts, not Switzer. Their decision led them to Stilts's home in Mission Hills, located at 10400 Columbus Avenue. Stilts shared the residence with his wife, Rita Corrigan, and her children from a previous marriage. Switzer and Piot intended to demand money from Stilts, but the ensuing events were the subject of differing accounts. While there are discrepancies in the various accounts of the incident, they all concur that Stilts was struck over the left side of his heed with a glass clock. Subsequently, Stilts retreated to his room and retrieved a 38 caliber revolver, which Switzer and he began to wrestle for. In the midst of their struggle, the gun discharged, nearly injuring Tom Corrigan, Stilts's 14-year-old stepson. 
Stiltz claimed self-defense in his account of the altercation, testifying that Switzer had aggressively knocked on his front door, shouting threats of breaking in. According to Stiltz, one of the men, either Switzer or Piot, struck him with the clock, prompting him to retrieve his firearm. Switzer allegedly attempted to seize the gun, and it accidentally discharged, nearly striking Corrigan. Stiltz further asserted that Switzer threatened him with a knife, declaring, I'm going to kill you! In response, Stiltz fired his weapon, hitting Switzer in the groin, causing massive internal bleeding. Tragically, Switzer succumbed to his injuries and was pronounced dead upon arrival at the hospital. Tom Corrigan's account of the incident differed significantly from his stepfather's testimony. He informed investigators that Stiltz had shot Switzer as he and Piot were leaving the scene. According to Corrigan, after the accidental discharge of the gun, Switzer and Piot decided to depart. As they headed for the door, Stiltz fired the fatal shot. Contrary to Stiltz's claim, Corrigan maintained that Switzer never brandished a knife during the altercation. Remarkably, Tom Corrigan was never called to testify at the coroner's inquest, and Stiltz's testimony was deemed truthful, despite physical evidence contradicting his account and his prior perjury conviction. Years later, Corrigan stood by his original account of the events that transpired that fateful night and believed that his stepfather had not needed to resort to lethal force against Switzer. Carl Dean Switzer's tragic death continued to be a subject of controversy and revisitation over the years. Initially, the shooting had been ruled as an act of self-defense during the inquest. However, new details emerged more than four decades later, shedding light on the incident from another perspective. In January 2001, a third witness, Tom Corrigan, emerged to provide his account of the events that unfolded the night Switzer was killed. Tom Corrigan, the son of Western movie star Ray Crash, Corrigan and the stepson of Moses Stiltz, had been a child present at the scene that fateful evening. According to Corrigan, the events did not align with a clear-cut case of self-defense. He described it as something closer to murder. Corrigan recalled that night vividly. Switzer had knocked on the front door and claimed to be a delivery man from Western Union there to see Bud Stilts. Rita Corrigan, Tom's mother, opened the door to find Switzer, who was visibly intoxicated. Switzer began complaining about a debt he believed was owed to him for a perceived month-old debt and demanded repayment. As the encounter escalated, Corrigan stated that Switzer entered the house first, followed by Jack Piot. Switzer allegedly declared his intention to confront Stilts physically. In response, Stilts confronted Switzer while holding a 38 caliber revolver. According to Corrigan, a violent struggle erupted between Switzer and Stilts over the firearm. Piot, in the midst of the struggle, reportedly smashed a glass-domed clock over Stilts's head, causing Stilts's eye to swell shut. During the chaos, a shot was fired into the ceiling and Corrigan himself was struck in the leg by a fragment. Corrigan's younger sisters ran to a neighbor's house to seek help during the chaos. Corrigan recounted that as Switzer and Piot attempted to leave the house, Switzer was heard saying, Well, we shot Tommy. Enough of this. Just as they were about to exit, Corrigan claimed he heard but did not witness a second gunshot. When he turned to look, he saw Switzer sliding down the wall with a look of surprise on his face, indicating that he had been shot. Corrigan also mentioned that he noticed a closed penknife near Switzer's side, which he presumed had fallen out of Switzer's pocket or hand during the altercation. Subsequently, Corrigan stated that his stepfather, Stilts, forcefully pushed Piot against the kitchen counter and threatened to kill him as well. The sound of approaching emergency sirens apparently deterred Stilts from carrying out this threat, and Piot's life was spared. Corrigan further disclosed that he believed his stepfather had lied in his account of the incident before the coroner's jury. Despite Corrigan's willingness to testify and provide his perspective to the authorities, he was never called before the court. Moses Stilts, the central figure in this tragic episode, passed away in 1983 at the age of 62, leaving behind a complex and controversial legacy intertwined with the events surrounding Carl Dean Switzer's untimely demise.
Carl Dean Switzer's final resting place is in the historic Hollywood Forever Cemetery, situated in the heart of Hollywood, California. Unfortunately, the timing of his passing on January 21, 1959, coincided with the death of the renowned filmmaker Cecil B. DeMille on the same day. As a result, Switzer's death received relatively minimal attention in most newspapers, with the columns dominated by DeMille's obituary. Interestingly, Switzer had a connection to Cecil B. DeMille. He had made an uncredited appearance as a slave in DeMille's final credited film as a director, The Ten Commandments. This connection adds an intriguing layer to Switzer's Hollywood legacy. Switzer's gravestone at the Hollywood Forever Cemetery bears symbols that reflect different aspects of his life. On the gravestone, one can find the square and compasses, which are emblematic of Freemasonry, indicating his affiliation with this fraternal organization. Additionally, the gravestone features an image of a hunting dog, a poignant nod to his interests and involvement in dog training and hunting guiding during the period leading up to his untimely demise. Scott Hastings Beckett, born on October 4, 1929, was an American actor who made a notable mark in the world of entertainment, primarily as a child actor. His career encompassed both film and television, and he is best remembered for his roles in the Our Gang shorts and as a co-star on Rocky Jones' Space Ranger. Beckett's journey into the world of entertainment commenced at an early age. In his formative years, he ventured into acting and quickly found his way to the silver screen. One of his most significant early roles was in the Our Gang shorts, a popular series of comedy films featuring a group of mischievous and endearing children. Beckett's contributions to the Our Gang series helped solidify his reputation as a talented child actor. As he transitioned into his adolescent years, Beckett continued to pursue his passion for acting. He made a notable move to television, where he co-starred in the series Rocky Jones' Space Ranger. This show, set in a futuristic spacefaring world, allowed Beckett to showcase his acting skills in a different genre, adding diversity to his growing portfolio. However, Scott Hastings Beckett's life took a tragic and mysterious turn in his later years, marked by his untimely demise. Born on October 4, 1929, Beckett was an American actor whose career had its beginnings as a child actor in the entertainment industry. In the spring of 1968, specifically on May 8th, Beckett found himself in a state of distress, possibly as a result of suffering a severe beating, although the exact circumstances surrounding this incident remained unclear. Seeking medical attention and assistance, he checked into a nursing home in Los Angeles, where he hoped to recover and address the physical and emotional wounds he had sustained. However, the hopes of recovery and renewal were tragically cut short. On May 10, 1968, just two days after entering the nursing home, Beckett was discovered lifeless in his room. He was only 38 years old at the time of his passing. At the scene, a note and pills were found, indicating that he may have taken his own life. Despite conducting an autopsy, the Los Angeles County coroner could not definitively determine the precise cause of death. While no official cause of death was officially listed, Various media reports suggested that Beckett may have succumbed to an overdose of either barbiturates or alcohol. The circumstances surrounding his death remained shrouded in mystery, leaving questions unanswered. Scott Hastings Beckett's final resting place is at the San Fernando Mission Cemetery in Mission Hills, Los Angeles, where he was laid to rest. Norman Myers Cheney, born on October 18, 1914, was an American child actor whose brief but memorable career left an indelible mark on the world of entertainment. He is particularly renowned for his role as Chubby in the beloved Our Gang comedies, having appeared in 19 of these iconic films from 1929 to 1931. Cheney's journey into the world of entertainment began at a young age when he was discovered for his endearing and distinctive appearance. His cherubic cheeks and charming personality quickly made him a standout in the film industry, earning him the nickname 
Chubby. Shaney's debut in the Our Gang series marked the start of his remarkable career as a child actor. As Chubby, Chaney became an integral part of the Our Gang ensemble, sharing the screen with other young talents and creating comedic moments that continue to bring joy to audiences today. His performances in these comedies endeared him to fans worldwide, and he became one of the series' most beloved and recognizable characters. However, despite his promising start in the entertainment industry, Cheney's life was tragically ended. Following his time on the series, Cheney returned to his hometown of Baltimore and enrolled in public school. Remarkably, he excelled in his studies, demonstrating not only his talent in front of the camera, but also his intellectual abilities. Despite a normal diet and regular exercise throughout his childhood, Cheney encountered a perplexing issue as he continued to gain weight, eventually reaching a staggering 300 pounds while never growing beyond a height of 4 feet 7 inches. As his weight continued to increase, medical investigations revealed that Cheney was suffering from a glandular ailment, which contributed to his weight gain. In 1935, he sought treatment for this ailment at Johns Hopkins Hospital in Baltimore. The treatment proved to be transformative, causing his weight to plummet from over 300 pounds to less than 140 pounds in a relatively short period. However, the rapid weight loss took a toll on Cheney's health. The stress on his body from this dramatic change ultimately led to serious illness, and he tragically succumbed to myocarditis on May 29, 1936, at the tender age of 21. At the time of his passing, he weighed a mere 110 pounds, highlighting the toll that his health struggles had taken. Norman Myers, Cheney's death marked a solemn moment in the Our Gang community, as he was the first of the regular cast members to pass away. He was laid to rest in Baltimore Cemetery, his hometown, but his grave remained unmarked for 76 years. Financial constraints had prevented his mother from affording a marker for either of them. Despite having earned a weekly salary for his work in movies, Cheney never received any royalties or residuals from the films in which he had appeared. In 2012, an online fundraising effort spearheaded by Detroit rock musician Michael successfully raised $4,500 to provide headstones for both Cheney and his mother. On November 10, 2012, etched black granite markers were unveiled at their graves in Baltimore Cemetery, finally providing a lasting tribute to the memory of Norman Myers Cheney and his family. Tommy Laughlin, whose full name was Thomas Robert Laughlin, was born on July 5, 1932, in San Gabriel, California. He was the son of Robert Vine Laughlin, born on August 28, 1901, and Charlotte C. Cruikshank, born on March 11, 1903. Laughlin's birthplace in California was the backdrop for the beginning of his life journey, which would later lead him into the world of entertainment. Tommy Laughlin's connection to the entertainment industry extended beyond his own career. He was not only an actor, but also someone who made a lasting impact on those he worked with. According to fellow Our Gang actor Robert Blake, Laughlin was dearly loved by those who had the privilege of knowing and working alongside him. Tommy Laughlin's journey in the world of entertainment began at a remarkably young age, propelling him to fame when he was just eight years old. His breakthrough came with his role as Harold in the 1940 Our Gang film titled The New Pupil. In these early films, Laughlin played a supporting role alongside Alfalfa Switzer, a beloved character in the Our Gang series. As time progressed, Laughlin's talent and comedic abilities became more prominent. In 1941, he assumed the mantle of the comic lead within the Our Gang ensemble, taking over from the now too old Alfalfa Switzer. His character was notable for his distinctive and unusual voice, which bore a resemblance to a frog's croak. This unique vocal quality added a distinct charm to his character, making him a standout in the series. One notable aspect of Laughlin's portrayal was that he did his own voice work without any dubbing, relying on his natural talent. His distinctive voice, often likened to a Popeye impersonation he had been entertaining friends with, became an iconic feature of his character in the Our Gang films. 
Laughlin's journey with our gang continued until the series ceased production in 1944. His final appearance in the Our Gang series was in the last film of the series, titled Dancing Romeo. After the end of the Our Gang era, he made a cameo appearance in the non-Our Gang film Johnny Doesn't Live Here Anymore, produced by Monogram. In this film, he spoke in his natural voice, marking a unique departure from his typical character voice in the Our Gang series. However, the promise of a bright future was tragically cut short. On August 31, 1948, at the young age of 15, Tommy Laughlin's life was abruptly ended in a devastating accident. While delivering newspapers near his home in La Puente, California, he was involved in a collision with a speeding truck. The motor scooter he was riding, a Cushman, was struck by the truck. Tragically, Laughlin did not survive the accident. At the time of the accident, Laughlin was accompanied by a 16-year-old friend named John Wilband who was operating the scooter. In an attempt to make a U-turn in front of the truck, the collision occurred. Thankfully, John Wilband survived the accident with only minor injuries. Adding to the heartbreak of the situation was the fact that the scooter had been a recent gift from Laughlin's parents, given to him just two weeks prior to the accident. Tommy Laughlin's untimely passing marked a somber moment in the history of child actors as he passed away at the age of 15, making him the youngest among the actors who had appeared in the Our Gang films. In the aftermath of the tragedy, Tommy Laughlin was interred in a grave at the Rose Hills Memorial Park Cemetery in Whittier, California. Donald Haynes, born on May 9, 1919, was an American child actor whose brief yet notable career made him a familiar face to fans of the Or Gang Short Subjects series. His recurring appearances in the series spanned from 1930 to 1933, a period when the series was transitioning into the early sound era of filmmaking. During his time in Our Gang, Donald Haynes shared the screen with a talented ensemble of young actors who would go on to become iconic figures in the world of film and entertainment. Among his fellow cast members were notable names like Norman Chubby, Chene, Alan Farina, Hoskins, Jackie Cooper, Matthew Stymie, Beard, Bobby Weezer Hutchins, and Dorothy DeBorba. Together, they formed a talented and endearing group of child actors who delighted audiences with their comedic performances. The Our Gang series, known for its heartwarming and humorous tales of a group of mischievous children, provided Haynes with a platform to showcase his acting abilities and leave an indelible mark on the world of film during the early sound era. However, Donald Haynes's time in the entertainment industry was relatively short-lived, and he did not continue his acting career beyond his appearances in Our Gang. Despite the brevity of his career, he remains a cherished figure among fans of classic cinema, remembered for his contributions to the beloved Our Gang series during its formative years. On December 10, 1941, following the United States' entry into World War II, Haynes enlisted as an aviation cadet in the United States Army Air Forces. His decision to serve his country in a time of global conflict marked a profound shift in his life. Haynes's commitment to his military service led him to rise through the ranks, and at the time of his untimely passing, he had achieved the rank of first lieutenant. He served in the 93rd Fighter Squadron, demonstrating his dedication to defending his nation during a challenging period in history. Tragically, on February 20th, 1943, while stationed in North Africa, Haynes made the ultimate sacrifice. He lost his life in the line of duty, fighting for the cause he had chosen to embrace. His service and valor in the midst of World War II were a testament to his courage and dedication. In recognition of his service and sacrifice, Donald Haynes was laid to rest in Inglewood Park Cemetery in Los Angeles. Robert E. Hutchins, born on March 29, 1925, was an American child actor who became a familiar face to audiences as a regular member of the Our Gang Short Subjects series. His association with the series spanned from 1927 to 1933, marking a significant part of his early life in the world of entertainment. Hutchins, originally hailing from Tacoma, Washington, 
embarked on his acting career at a young age. His nickname, Weezer, was affectionately bestowed upon him after a rather energetic first day on the studio lot. Young Robert was so full of enthusiasm and energy that he ran around the studio so vigorously that he began to wheeze, earning him this endearing moniker. As a member of the Organg Ensemble, Hutchins became part of a close-knit group of child actors who delighted audiences with their humorous and heartwarming performances. The series, known for its tales of a group of mischievous and lovable children, provided a platform for Hutchins to showcase his talent and personality. During his time in Our Gang, Hutchins contributed to the series' enduring legacy and created memorable moments on screen alongside fellow young actors. His presence and contributions added to the charm of the series during this formative period in its history. Despite his early success in the entertainment industry, Hutchins did not continue his acting career beyond his time in Our Gang. However, his contributions to the series remain a cherished part of classic cinema, remembered by fans of all ages. Tragically, Robert E. Hutchins' life was cut short at a young age. On May 17, 1945, he passed away, marking the end of a promising life that had once been full of energy and enthusiasm. His legacy lives on in the hearts of those who appreciate the timeless humor and endearing characters he helped bring to life during his years as Weezer in the Our Gang series. Tragically, on May 17, 1945, Robert E. Hutchins' life took a heartbreaking turn. While attempting to land a North American AT-6DNT Texan aircraft with serial number 4286536, -6, which was part of the 3026th base unit, he was involved in a mid-air collision. The collision occurred when his aircraft struck another AT-6C-15NT Texan, serial number 4249068, -4 from the same unit at Merced Army Airfield in Merced, California. This tragic incident took place during a training exercise. Regrettably, Hutchins did not survive the collision, marking the untimely end of a life that had once been brimming with energy and promise. His passing left a void in the hearts of those who had known and admired him. Adding to the sorrow of the situation, Hutchins's mother, Olga Hagerson Hutchins, had been anticipating traveling to the airfield to witness her son's graduation from flying school. Darla Jean Hood, born on November 8, 1931, in Lee Day, Oklahoma, was a talented American child actress who left an indelible mark on the world of entertainment. She is best remembered as the leading lady in the beloved Our Gang series, where she captivated audiences with her charm and youthful exuberance from 1935 to 1941. Darla was the only child of her parents. Elizabeth Davner, who was a music teacher, and James Claude Hood, who worked in the banking industry. Her upbringing in Oklahoma provided a solid foundation for her early career in the entertainment industry. Darla's journey in the world of film and entertainment began when she became a central figure in the Our Gang series, a popular collection of short films that featured a group of mischievous and endearing children. Her portrayal as the leading lady in the series endeared her to audiences and solidified her status as a beloved child star. Despite her young age, Darla Jean Hood's talent and on-screen presence made her a standout in the Our Gang Ensemble. Her contributions to the series contributed to its enduring popularity, and her portrayal of the leading lady left a lasting impression on fans of all ages. Beyond her acting career, Darla's family background, with her mother's involvement in music education and her father's work in banking, provided a supportive backdrop for her early endeavors in the entertainment industry. Her journey from Lee Day, Oklahoma to Hollywood allowed her to share her talent and charisma with audiences around the world. Her life took a sudden and tragic turn in the midst of her efforts to organize a reunion for the Los Angeles chapter of the Sons of the Desert, a fraternal organization dedicated to the appreciation of Laurel and Hardy 
As Hood was actively engaged in preparing for the 1980 Little Rascals reunion, she faced a health challenge that would ultimately prove fatal. She underwent an appendectomy at Canoga Park Hospital in Canoga Park, California. However, in a heartbreaking turn of events, she developed complications following the surgery. On June 13, 1979, at the age of 47, Darla Jean Hood passed away suddenly due to heart failure. The Our Gang community, as well as fans of classic cinema, were deeply shocked and saddened by her unexpected death. An autopsy later revealed that Hood had contracted hepatitis C as a result of a contaminated blood transfusion she had received during the appendectomy. This tragic medical error led to her untimely demise, fellow Our Gang member, Billy Buckwheat. Thomas expressed his grief at the news of Hood's passing, remembering her as an awfully nice person and a fine woman. He reflected on their positive relationship during their time together as child actors. Sadly, Billy Thomas himself would pass away a little over a year later, adding to the somber losses within the Our Gang community. Darla Jean Hood's funeral was attended by her fellow Our Gang members, including Matthew Stymy Beard and Mickey Laughlin, who paid their respects to their former colleague and friend. Her untimely death marked the end of a remarkable life in the world of entertainment and left a void in the hearts of those who had known and admired her. Matthew Beard Jr., born on January 1, 1925 in Los Angeles, California, was an American actor who achieved fame at a young age for his memorable portrayal of Stymie in the beloved Our Gang short comedy films. His performance in these films from 1930 to 1935 catapulted him to stardom, and the role became so iconic that he adopted the name Stymie Beard and was credited as such in some of his later roles. As a child actor, Matthew Beard Jr. captured the hearts of audiences with his endearing and comedic portrayal of Stymie in the Our Gang series. These short films, known for their humorous and heartwarming tales of a group of mischievous children, provided Beard with a platform to showcase his talent and charismatic on-screen presence. Stymie Beard's character, with his distinctive bowler hat and charming personality, became one of the most beloved and recognizable figures in the world of early cinema. His contributions to the Our Gang series played a significant role in its enduring popularity and legacy. Following his time in Our Gang, Beard continued his acting career, earning recognition for his talents and remaining a beloved figure among fans of classic cinema. His dedication to his craft and his ability to connect with audiences made him a respected actor in the entertainment industry. In later years, Beard even revisited his iconic stymie persona as evidenced by his 1978 appearance in The Buddy Holly Story, where he was credited as Stymie Beard, paying homage to the role that had defined his early career. Tragically, Matthew Beard Jr.'s life was cut short at the age of 56, as he passed away on January 8, 1981. Despite the brevity of his time on Earth, his contributions to film and entertainment, particularly as Stymie, continue to be celebrated and cherished by fans of all ages. His legacy lives on as a testament to the enduring appeal of classic cinema and the endearing characters that made it so beloved. Tragically, on January 3, 1981, just two days after celebrating his 56th birthday, Beard suffered a stroke. This health setback was compounded by head injuries he sustained from a fall down a flight of stairs. These health challenges ultimately led to his passing on January 8, 1981, in Los Angeles, California. His death was attributed to pneumonia, and it marked the end of a life that had brought joy and laughter to countless fans. Matthew Beard Jr. found his final resting place in the Evergreen Cemetery in Los Angeles. He was laid to rest with the famous Darby hat that had become a symbol of his beloved Stymie character, a touching tribute to the role that had endeared him to audiences for generations. What do you think about the tragic endings of the cast of Little Rascals, our gang? Leave us your comments in the section below. 
We hope you have found this helpful video. Don't forget to leave a like, share, and subscribe to the channel if you like it. Thank you for watching this and see you in the next videos. Goodbye.